start this recording okay so we're recording so we can get this all uh, onto the site now chris has caught up i think with all of our all the classes that i have recorded uh, has been put on our website so you can go to uh, under training here if you go to class review and by the way we're going to change this so when you go into training under webinars uh, the class reviews and everything will be under the webinar Okay, but right now you have to go to a separate page class review and then here are the previous ones that we've done that we have recorded okay so heads up there, those are available for you to start. Uh, watching if you so desire. All right, let me just close that file real quickly and let's close this out and we're going to get started. Okay, the first thing I want to do is I want to kind of bring you up to speed with, for those of you who have uh, the beta version of CCAM Pro, and if you don't and you would like to get it, you can um, on our website, uh, but there are a couple of things that we're updating here. We found a few little bugs from reports from our customers that are testing, and we're constantly making development on it. And if you go to our website, let me open that back up again. I shouldn't have closed it. All right. First of all, if you go to, let's just go to our site right here. If you go to Y Legacy and Customer Showcase Submission, then you can enter the information in here and choose files to upload. And this would qualify you for a beta version of the new CCAM Pro. And we would send that out. It will cost you, it's actually a little, this is wrong. It used to be $16, but of course, prices of everything have gone up. It's about 20 bucks now. It's just to cover the cost of the flash drive and the shipping. So the program will be free, but it would cost you 20 bucks to get it. And then you're, you're welcome to test it. Now, here's the next thing. I, for those of you who are using it now, I have sent out a link and it's a pretty simple, there's no, there's no uh, button on our website. So you have to go directly to the link, but it's simply, lwmcnc.com slash ccam okay and that will take you to another form that is the feedback form uh, for you to put your name your email which model cnc you're using the, the version of ccam pro you're using and right now it's all going to be one or 1.1 1 .1. And then you can check whether you're testing just setups or a particular workstation or general use or whatever. You can also, if you're using, for example, the turning center and you're using a particular toolpath, you can say turning around toolpath here, give us the results of your test. And then we've got a section here for suggestions and questions and comments so that you can give as much feedback as possible. And then you just hit submit. Now, uh, I, I have a, access to this as well as um, Mike Resch also has access to this because he's doing all the program for the toolpaths and so appreciates all your feedback. And this is the best way to get information back to Mike. So if we need to make updates, which he has made several so far, we can continue doing that. All right, so just again, just wanted to bring you up to date with that. The other thing that we have is if you have a version right now, it used to be we had to send you a new flash drive and you had to pay the $16 every time. But we are right now working on this install add-ons. And so you could download, uh, we could just email you an update of the software, the latest greatest, and you just run it as an add-on and hit open and it'll instantly update your version of CCAM Pro or Conversational CAM Pro. Um, and it'll update all the files, not only the, the program, but the other files, like the uh, if we update the uh, tool database or things like that. So that's exciting. You'll be able to upgrade without costing you any money, um, and you don't have to wait. We can just send out an email. I'm testing that update right now. We've got a few little uh, things we're working out, and then we start sending those out. So um, I'll look through the files, find out what everybody's doing, what problems you're having, we'll make the corrections, and we'll continue sending out updates so that you can stay up to date with everything. Okay, enough on the CCAM Pro or Conversational CAM Pro. Um, what we're going to do now is we are going to start by designing this table. I made a, a, I made a, a 
sudden change in our <laughs> schedule. And I'll bring that up for you as well real quickly. I keep closing this and I shouldn't. Okay, so if I go into training and we go to the webinars and we look at the, um, the calendar, this first one was a, was a little bit different and we had to change it. I found out I didn't have all the cutters I needed and I needed a little bit more time. So I've adjusted the classes and the first class is going to be on designing the blank or the display table. And then we are going to set it up in, we're going to use CCAM Pro, which is the perfect software for organizing and building all of this. And so you're going to see how we set it up. We won't do a lot of programming tonight. Um, we'll do the design work, but not the programming. In the next class, we will step into the programming and we'll focus on the, um, on working on leg we'll work, and the rails. We'll work on the joinery. We'll do the offset uh, mortises at 90 degrees and we'll also do the tenons on the vertical vice and so on and then on the next one the next class we'll do uh, let me skip forward one will be right here this will be class three this is where we're going to do the tapering on the leg and show you how to use the uh, adjustable bed on that for this is actually the fifth axis um, and get into some of the details here and show off some of the new tool paths that Mike's developed for legs turning around. We're going to do uh, actually tapered indexed flutes, which are going to be pretty cool. So that's where we're headed with the classes. Now, let's go ahead and I'll leave this open this time so I don't have to keep opening it. And let's go ahead and start designing a part. Now, I personally prefer to design in TurboCAD. It used to be AutoCAD, then it was TurboCAD. I designed in SketchUp. I designed a lot of different software. But I know many of you don't want to buy additional software and learn different programs. So I am going to program, this is something we don't normally do, but I'm going to program the entire project in Aspire, and it could be done in VCarve Pro as well. The Typically, you're only programming a part. So when you do a job setup, you put in the blank size of the part that you're working on. This one's not really going to be that way. I'm going to, uh, well, we we could we could make this any size we want. It's irrelevant. So I'm going to make it 30 inches by 30 inches. And none of this other thing matters. I'm not programming anything in here right now. All I'm going to do is design it. So all I need is just a blank kind of a, a sheet to work on. And then I can start drawing my parts. Um, I'm going to use the draw rectangle. And again, if I go too fast, scream at me and I'll slow down a little bit. But uh, again, right over here under create vectors, the draw rectangle. And you can either just drag it out here like this, or you can come in here and put exact dimensions. I'm going to make, this is going to be a display table. It's kind of a small display table that goes in kind of in a corner of a room uh, or next to the sofa or something. And um, it, it can be a beautiful little tiny table, but it's pretty high. We're going to make it 28 inches. The legs are going to be 20 inches tall. So it'll be about almost 29 inches tall total when we're finished. Okay. So I'm going to draw the leg and I'm going to make it 28 inches long and I'm going to make it uh, 1.5 inches um, by 1.5 inches. So it's going to be square 1.5 inches and we'll hit apply and then I'm just going to slide that in the table. So this is my working blank. This is the square blank that I'm going to begin with and I'm going to design the leg and then I'm going to quickly design the table, the whole table, and we can break out every single part. All right. So um, one of the things that I'm going to do is open up a, uh, let's go to downloads and I'm going to grab my, uh, I'm sure I have router bits here somewhere. Yeah, there we go. The router bit profile. I need to put it in a standard directory or on the desktop or something so I can find it quickly. It's always in my downloads. And of course I pile things on top of it. So I have to go find it. But this is a file, again, you can download from our website. It'll take a, a second for it to load. And I'm just going to click on it again so I can move it up here out of the way a little bit so it's not on my the sheet. All right. So now what we're going to do is simply select the cutters that we're going to use to design the leg. And you've seen this about a billion times. But so let's go it through real quickly. And if you want to build a table like this, I this will simply show you a concept. Of course, you can design the legs any way that you want, 
but this will put the whole package together and then you can customize it any way that you want. I have selected the bit and the the description and I'm going to come over here to edit objects. I'm going to group them together so that if I click on one element, it selects them all. I'm going to control C to copy and then control V to paste. So now there's a two copies, one on top of each other. Um, and I'm going to put, I'm going to use this aligned objects right here to simply send one of them down. And you can see it puts it down here in the middle of my screen like so. So I'm going to use that particular cutter, 3954, inch and a half classic. I'm also going to use a 2704, which is the surface planing bit to turn it round or machine it square. So again, this is going to be very repetitive. I'm going to group it. I'm going to control C, control V, and then I'm going to click on the align objects to send it down. Um, I'm going to use a two flute straight cutter quarter inch. Uh, I use this end mill. This is what I'm going to use right here. So let's grab this information as well as the cutter. Group, control C, control V to paste, send it down. Did I do the right one? <laughs> I don't think I did the right one. Okay, we'll send this one down right here. This is the quarter inch, one inch diameter that I, that I want. I think I sent the other one. Yep, I did. All right, let's group this, control C, control V, and send it down. We'll just delete the other one when we get down there. So the surfacing bit is going to use to machine it square or turn it round with the taper. The uh, uh, end mill is going to be used to cut the uh, mortise, the offset mortises. Uh, for the turning, we're going to use the classic spiral to form a little bead detail. We're going to keep this design fairly simple. I'm also going to use a V bit. Um, We'll use a one inch diameter uh, V grooving bit, 90 degree. So we'll group it, control C, control V, paste it and then send it down. That's gonna do the lamb's tongue. Um, and let's see, we'll for the fluting, we'll probably use a small core box. So I'm gonna grab this one right here. It's a quarter inch, a pretty small, and that'll be good because these legs are fairly small. So I'm gonna use this one. Again, group, control C, control V, send it on down. That should do the fluting, the bead, the turning, the joinery and everything for the leg. Um, I might need for the tabletop, I'm probably, well, let's do this. Let's do a, uh, let's do a, uh, yeah, half inch radius plunge flat. So we're gonna use this guy here. We'll group it. Um, control C, control V, and send it on down. Okay, we'll start with that. All right, now here's the deal is, of course, it piled them all on top of each other. So I'm just going to uh, click and then click again. So it puts it into the move mode, and I'll just do all of these. Oops, sorry. So I click once and I click again to get it into the moving or to the move uh, tool. and just drag them over here to the side. So we have access to all these cutters, two flute straight. That's the one I don't want. I'm just gonna delete that. Okay, and then the last thing I'm gonna do here is take all of these cutters and I'm gonna move them to a new layer and I'm gonna call this the tools or something like that, all right? And by doing that, I can turn the router bit layer off. So now it's very responsive. I don't have that gigantic file. And we're not using this layer here, so I'm just going to delete it, we'll clean this up a little bit. We'll draw in layer one. Okay, so this right here, I want to make sure it moves to layer one. It is. Okay, so we're good to go. Everything I draw now is going to be in layer one. I could rename that. All right, so let's just start designing the leg real quickly. I'm going to have a square end here, and I'm going to make it uh, four and a half inches, 4.5 by an inch and a half like so. So there is this square end and we're going to put a mortise in here, which we'll, we'll cover in a second. I'm going to take this cutter right here. Now they're, they're grouped together so, and I don't want that. So I'm going to ungroup it right here. And I can do all of these at once. If I highlight all these, I can ungroup them. And now I can, you know, control C, control V, take that particular cutter and move it wherever I want. So let's bring it up here. I'll zoom in on it. 
I'm just going to grab this corner and just snap it to that edge right there. Okay. Now there's a couple of ways to, to, you can mirror these, you can do all kinds of things, but I'm going to, I like the control C control V. It just pastes something right on top of it. And then I'm going to use the zero or the nine to just rotate it 180 degrees. And then I'm going to grab this corner and just put it right there. So instead of a mirroring tool, I used uh, a tool like this and I'm going to draw these lines in here real quickly. I'll just hit a um, the shift bar between you know, once I draw that line, I hit shift bar to start a new one. And I, so I've got all the details here on this one. And now I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, let me get out of there. I don't need that. I'm going to take all of those control C control V. And again, I'm going to drag it over here, but I'll just move it out of the way so I can grab this corner. It turns to a little square box and put it back to this one. And that's my detail that we're going to use on this particular leg. Now we're going to taper this section. Uh, one way to do this is to draw a vector down here and I'm going to make it, uh, uh, we can use the things over here, 90 degree angle and we'll make it 0.75 inches long. We'll add that and finish it. And then I'm simply going to take that and double click on it. I'll grab the center and snap it to the center right there. All right, then we can draw a line from this edge right here and it'll snap you you can see if i zoom in you can see it will snap to a square once we hit the edge of that line and again i could use a, a mirror tool or i can uh, do the same thing here i can grab this end and snap it to that end okay and at this point this uh, um this rectangle here is no longer needed because it was just there for me to to have the, the rough blank, but that's what we're going to end up with right there. And we'll also do a couple other things right here, for example, we're going to cut a mortise in here, and so i'm just going to kind of sketch something out we will make it. Uh, the mortise i'm going to make it two inches long and we'll make it uh, maybe 0.3 inches uh, in the Y we will apply that. And now I'm just going to double click on it and I'll grab, if you grab the center, it turns to that little mark and then I'll just drag it to the center here. But I'm going to move this down. I'll use the transform objects tools over here and in relative, we'll just say relative, move it down a half inch. Okay. Now that's the mortise. So if we have, if we were looking at the rail, it would be sitting right like so, and we'll make this uh, three inches by 0.75 and apply that. And it looks like it's it probably snapped right, right where we want it, but I can make sure by just grabbing that and dragging it that way. And so what this would do is it put it right in the center. And one of the things that we'd like to do is not have the rail in the center with this big step back, but we'd like to take all of this and i'm going to use the transform a move tool and in the y-axis i'm going to go a minus 0.125 or even a quarter inch depends on how much lip you want right here so the, this this would be the outside of the leg you know if you're looking at the outside where the rail ties in and this is we inside the table so you decide where you want to place these and how much reveal you want right here i might want another Oops, let's go. Okay, there's the center. Let's go minus 0.25. And so we've just got a little bit of a reveal, maybe an eighth of an inch. And that might be what you want. I don't, I don't think I want quite that much. So I'm going to go back to the Y and say minus eighth inch. Something like that. Okay, you get to decide whatever you want. All right, now one thing we know is that um, we can't cut a square mortise with a router bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this tool right here it's the fillet and we're going to use a normal fillet and we'll make it because we will use a quarter inch cutter i'll make the radius an eighth of an inch like so and then we'll just check these in here so that's the shape of the mortise and that'll also be the shape of the tenons we have both of those here now 
Um, and that's what's going to be. Now, I'm also going to do a flute down in here, but I'm not going to focus on that right now. Just know that the flute's going to be in here, but it's going to taper. It's going to be not as wide or as deep at this end as it is at this end. That, that makes the spacing stay uh, you know, pretty even instead of having a big wide gap up here between the flutes and a narrow gap between the flutes here and the flutes being the same size. We'll get more into that in a little bit. For right now, let's just get the basic design down so that we can Tracy, create. Yeah. Uh, this is Wilfred. How, how thick was your the end of your taper? It's three quarters of an inch right here. Okay. This end It's three quarters. Thank you. Okay. And the overall blank here is an inch and a half. So I'm going right. down to yep. taking it down to half of it. Okay. Got it. All right. Now I like to just again control C, control V. I just make a copy and I'm just going to throw this over here so I can work with that later. And but this one here, I'm going to take that and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. I use the letter Z, or the letter, the number zero or the number nine to rotate it 45 degrees at a time. That's a real fit, fast way to do that. And then I'm just going to use my alignment tool to put it kind of here in the middle. All right. Now let's draw a tabletop. So this is one leg. We're going to have a tabletop. We'll put the other leg on here and then we'll put the rail on. So we'll use the, the create a rectangle vector. And I apologize. I'm going really fast through this design because this class isn't really too much on design. <laughs> That's one reason we're recording it so that you can come back and catch all of the little things that you might miss as I scream through this a million miles an hour. But uh, we, we want to get this uh, together so we can create the project without it taking forever. So I just drew something out there, but I'm going to change the x axis i'm going to make the the tabletop itself is going to be 12 inches square and it'll be three quarters of an inch thick that's fine we'll apply that and then i'm going to use i, I want a little overhang right here i don't want the the leg right at the corner so i'm going to use my move tool and relative in the x axis i'm going to move it um, back minus whoops minus 0.75 like so all right now Here's what I'm going to do. Again, you can use mirror tools, and I've done that a million times. But this time we're going to do it a little different. I'm going to select this. And to be honest with you, I'm, I don't want this in this drawing. I'm going to delete the mortise and the rail here. It's, it's not going to be there. This is just what the table is going to look like. All right. That's why I made a copy so I'd have all this detail um, you know, over here. So when we program it, we have all that information. But we want to design the table first. So I'm going to grab that leg, control C, control V, and then I'm just going to grab this in and snap it over here. And it went right to that corner. So I'm going to use the move tool again and just say X minus 0.75. We'll move the leg in instead of the table over. So there's our tabletop with our legs. With it's a, Again, it's a pretty simple design. You know, one thing I didn't do is I didn't throw in the lamb's tongue here which I need to do. We will need to, okay, we'll come back to the lamb's tongue. Sorry about that. Uh, now the rail is gonna be right here. And we can just say, it's gonna fit right there, but so we know it's seven and a half inches wide because it snapped to that. And I'm gonna make it three inches in the height. <laughs> you know what, I'm gonna make it four inches in the height. I'm going to make it a little bit thicker. And again, this is a design that you can play with and do whatever you want. If you don't like this design, I don't blame you. I'm throwing this together pretty fast. Uh, so, you know, make something that's even better and you can show me what you come up with. OK. Um, and I don't like just a flat square rail right here. So there's a couple of ways to do this. I can actually drag guides down here and place them where I want them. Or I can draw what I call construction lines. So, for example, I'm, I'm going to draw, I need to come in from right here. I want to come over three quarters of an inch. So if I draw a line right there, and then I use the move tool in the X, I can just say 0.75, and that looks good. I can control C, control V, and grab this one over to here so i'm just snapping to areas and then i use my move tool minus 0.75 to go like that and did i not control c control v evidently not uh, okay i did not get it copied let's copy it so control c control v now i'll move it over here 
and then we'll move use the move tool to go over 0.75 there we go and i can also draw well let's draw another construction line from here to here and let's move it in the y-axis uh, maybe uh, one inch or maybe 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 a little more maybe an inch and a quarter inch and a half let's try that and if you don't like it of course you can change it that's the beauty of this now i'm going to use the arc tool right here draw an arc over here on the left hand side i'll click on that and it just lets me snap to this corner and this corner and then to the center of that line and it creates that arc so these construction lines are toast now i'll just delete them and then i'm going to use the trim tool right here under edit objects i'll click on that and make sure it's click to rejoin it and i'll just click that off so now i have this part here is one shape that's my rail and there's my legs and there's my tabletop if I wanted to trim out the tabletop, I could take um, this guy right here. I'll control C and control V. So I create a copy and drag it up here. Okay. And let's take, uh, let's take the center here like that. And then we'll grab this end and we can just follow that line down. It'll snap to that corner. All right. So that's how we're going to, this may not be the most beautiful edge treatment, but you get the idea. We can do this pretty quickly. And I'm going to take this control C control V and I'll just drag it down here. Okay. So, and I'll grab this corner and again, I'll just have it go up like that. So it's centered on the part and I'm going to use the trim tool again. We'll trim these off and we'll trim these off. And again, if you want to use a different router bit, that's great. This is just one kind of standard common technique for rounding off the edge. And this is, this is a half inch. It's kind of big. You might want it smaller. You might want to do something different. Okay, I'm going to grab all of these, and I'm going to use the alignment tool, align objects over here to put it right in the center of my blank. All right, and then if we want to draw in our tenons, we're going to have one that goes right here. And I'm going to make it in the x-axis, we're going to make it 0.6. The mortise that we're going to cut is 5 eighths of an inch, 0.625. And I want a little bit of gap. So I'm going to make the tenon only 0.6. And the height is going to be 2 inches, as you see right there, like so. And then, again, this is, this is really handy. If I just, I'll zoom in here. If I grab right here, it's going to grab the center of that blank. And I'm just going to snap it to the center of that blank all right and we can do the same here control c control v grab this one and just snap it over here to there right now these two i'm going to right click and say move to a new layer and i'm going to call this the tenons because then i can turn that layer off so I can see what it's going to look like, but I can turn it back on for placement or anything else I want to do. Okay. And again, we'll come back and flute this. Um, we're kind of running out of time, so I, I want to move fast here. I do want to show you, this is one of the little challenges, is figuring out what the lamb tongue is going to look like. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quickly. We'll worry about the flutes later. Um, so I'm going to draw a rectangle here, and it's going to be an inch and a half by an inch and a half and i can just drag it out till it reads that and then i'm just going to move it over here to the side a little bit i'm going to use the the number nine or zero either one i'm going to rotate it 45 degrees so it's it's lined up right in the center with this so it's like you took this is the end view of that square and this is if you looked at it and rotated it 45 degrees then what's going to happen is with the parts rotated it's actually going to look you know, this wide. I'm going to draw one here at both sides. All right. And then it, we're going to use a, I'm going to do a V bit. An easy way to do a V bit is to just draw a rectangle. It really doesn't matter. The number zero or nine to rotate it. And then right click it, grab this corner, and we're going to do the lamb's tongue right from that 
radius up here like this. And then we'll control C, control V. Actually, yeah, wait a minute. Let's see if I can do, I wonder if I can do this. If I can snap right to this intersection. Yeah, right there. I'll just snap there and bring it down to here. Okay, so now we'll use the arc tool, and this is what it'll end up with. We'll go from right there to right there, and again, it'll just line to the center of this. And that's what the lamb's tongue looks like. So when the part's rotated, it's, it's cutting this corner up here like this, but when it rotates back to square on, that, that, that corner is going to be right there along that edge. And so that's what it'll look like. And again, these are all constructions, so I can just delete them. And that's what the lamb's tongue is going to look like. So I'm going to control C, control V. I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to use the letter or the letter, the number zero to rotate it. And then we're going to grab that center part and we're going to put it right there. And again, control C, control V and move it over here. I'll grab that center point and move it to that center point. So there's our lamb tongue. It'll radius that corner. So you won't have a square corner right there. Then we'll have the bead. Then we'll have the flutes. Let me scroll back in here so you can kind of see it. All right. So if you would like to build something like this to test, this is a great project because you're going to use, we're going to use the horizontal table, cut the tabletop and cut out the rails. We're going to use the vertical table to cut the tenons on the ends of the rails. And we're going to use the turning center with the adjustable bed to do our indexing square, cut our mortises, and uh, turn it tapered around and flute it all. So we're going to use all workstations in the machine. And that also lends itself into Conversational Cam Pro really well. So I will save this file and make it available to you. But if you wanted to do what we're doing, these are the cutters. Let me just move these a little bit closer um, for you. If you know, if you wanted to order these cutters, these are all magnate cutters, and I've got the cutter number in here as well as the drawing and the description. So you can just order, and this one, for example, order bit number seven hundred six, and magnate will know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, I'm just going to kind of line these up here so they're somewhat close, and we can also look at um, you know the blank sizes. So if you wanted to build this project then obviously we would need for the tabletop we would need a 12 by 12 by three quarter like so we would need a turning blank that is uh 28 by now i'm going to make it 1.625 instead of 1.5 I'm going to make the blank a little bit oversized, and that way I can machine it square, and I know it's going to come out perfectly concentric. So that's why I make this blank one and five eighths instead of uh, instead of one and a half. Okay, and then we would need the rail, and the rail let's let's create a new one would be uh, seven point five by four. Okay, and if you don't like by four, you make it any size you want. If this is too thick or if you don't want to make it a different size, this is just to give you some numbers to work with. And then I would love to see what you come up with if you do differently. So I'm just going to throw some dimensions on here. That's 12 inches there. Um, we'll throw dimensions on here as well. So you would need four of these blanks, 28 inches long. You would need four of these blanks seven and a half inches long and you need one tabletop that's 12 by 12 and this one's 12 and a half by four if you want to do what i'm doing and this one's 28 by inch and a half okay so again i'll save this entire drawing so you'll have everything for right now i'm going to turn my router bits off oh i didn't get you can see i didn't get everything <laughs> If you zoom in right here, I drew on 
the uh, layer for the router bits, and that's why those disappear. So I'll, I'll turn this on, and here's what we'll do. We'll take all of this, uh, whoops, let me get out of that. I'm going to select all of these, everything here, and I'll move this to the layer one. Now I can turn the router bit layer off, and everything else is still here. In fact, I'm going to take this drawing and move it over here. And maybe I'll put the cutters. Um, maybe we'll put the cutters like here for a second. I'll move these around. Tracy? Yeah. Does that rail include the length for the tenants to be on it? It does not. Nice call. All right. I'm glad you recognize that. I'm excited I had everybody build the wrong size parts and your tables would have been narrower than we planned on. Okay. So you're absolutely right. We're going to have tenons on the end of here. Um, and what I'm going to do again, the mortise is going to be 0.625. So we're going to make the tenon 0.6. So there'll be a little bit of a, a gap for glue at the bottom. So we need to increase the length of this by 1.2. So if we simply go into this tool right here, select or set the object size, we can take this 7.5 and we can just say plus 1.2 equals, make sure I hit the equal key. Okay, so it's 8.7. And now I'm going to unlink this because this has to stay at 4. When I increased this, it was linked, so it changed the, the y-axis, but we'll do it. We'll unlink it and change it like that. Hey, Tracy, and, on, yes. on that same note, uh, do we need to figure a little bit extra length on the, uh, the right and left side of our legs for the chuck on, and the, uh, the live end? Wow, Chris, that's an excellent idea. Let's do that. Um, I'm using a four jaw check, so you're absolutely correct. If I'm not using the four jaw check, you know, I still want to burn some material because this is only an inch and a half square and I don't want to hit the, the check. So let's do that. Let's add an inch to this guy. And so we'll just come in and select the size. We'll uncheck link and we'll make this 29. Okay, now what's going to happen is we're going to burn one inch in the chuck. So <laughs> this is going to be, there's a couple ways to set this up. When we get onto the machine, uh, next week when we go to program, uh, do this, I think I'll demonstrate on the machine your options. One option is, well, let me, let me fix this real quickly. I'm going to, before I forget, I'm going to put this horizontal dimension on here because it's now 29 not 28 okay so here's what Chris is referring to I'm going to build I'm going to use the four jaw chuck this is a very crude uh, version of the four jaw chuck right there all right that's holding it and it's in my chuck this goes in a quarter of an inch okay so I have a couple of options I can put the I can put the Z0 here at the end of the blank. I could put the Z0 right here at the beginning of the collet, or the, or the check, I'm sorry. Or I could, let's control C, control V, and then just use this move tool and move it relative one inch. Actually, it's not that one, I'm sorry. Let's. Uh, Let's move that back a little bit. Now we're going to move it relative one inch. Okay, so these are your options. This could be X0 on the wood. And then if you said 29, we would program everything starting at one. Okay, if you put it here, you're going to burn a quarter of inch. It's going to have extra material, but you might still want to push it out. If you put your X0 here, one inch from the end of the stock, out here, then you can program to zero. This is just going to be extra wood. So three options there, and that can be a little confusing. Um, to be honest with you, what I like to do is set the Z, Z or the X zero here at the end of the wood inside the chuck, and then I program everything starting at an inch out here. 
before I make any cuts. Okay, so I think that's, well, you guys can take a vote and tell me, would you rather put the X zero at the end of the chuck at the one inch of the wood or an inch in front of the chuck? I mean, you could also do that one too. So if we have this one, I could control C, control V and move that down one inch as well. So those are your four options. Let me move that. You could have X zero here, 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 or here. <laughs> okay. And you just got to program accordingly. So I will, I will, yeah, yeah, I don't know what I'll do. When we get there, we'll decide, okay? But that's a good point, Chris. I'm glad you brought that up. We'll make it 29 inches long, give us some material to put inside the chuck and not worry about hitting it. So there's your, your blanks. And this now became 8.7 inches, uh, 12 by 12 and one and five eighths instead of one and a half by 29. All right, I'm going to save this. How big is your live center so you don't run into that when you get down there? The live center, there's two different live centers we've used on the machine. One is a 60 degree large revolving center. Um, it's, it's pretty big. So you really want to end, you know, you can end past the end of the stock a, a little bit, quarter of an inch, and you're going to be fine but you wouldn't want to go like two inches past or you would run into that chuck. The other chuck that we send is we're, when we're sending now has a, it's a smaller diameter. So you got more clearance and it has a ring around it. So you cannot put it in any farther than the ring. The ring's got teeth as well. So it's got a center point plus a, a ring of teeth so that you cannot drive the, the dead center in so far that you actually split the wood or, in, or widen the opening or something like that. So. Okay, so I'm going to, I'll uh, post this on the website so you can download it. That'll be under the customer support files. Um, I will put it on, you know, well, here, I'll show you just one second. And I'm going to make it a VCarve Pro file instead of an Aspire file. That way, anybody with VCarve Pro or Aspire will be able to open it. And this will be called the display table. Is this 11? This is, this is 11. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I have, and this, that is a potential problem. You may, okay, I'll have this, this video so you can actually do your own. If you have a 10.5 or a 10 and, and don't want to upgrade to 11, don't want to pay the money, I'm on, because Aspire basically gives us the copies that we use, the licenses, um they expire every year and so then then we get a new one so i don't have old licenses i can't create previous versions it has to be 11. so if you've got an older version you can just watch this video and reproduce it it's pretty simple to do it's kind of fun it's a good exercise all right so i'll post that now let me show you where i'm going to post that if you go into uh, class review uh, you might be able to see some down here where i've posted other things as well but it'll be in the description yeah right here you see here's the description of this particular video and i put the download right here so when this one posts we'll, it'll show up here on the top and in the description it will have a link for the download it, it'll be tied to the project all right boy okay we're, oh, we're running out of time <laughs> okay well, here's what we're going to do we are going to set this up and then in the next class, we will do all the programming. So before I go on, are there any questions that uh, you missed in the design? Okay, good. Then we'll go on. Again, it is recorded, so you can come back and review all this if you miss something. Hey, Tracy. Yes. Uh, I have a question on the leg. When you first drew it, then you drew the tenon, uh, or the mortise, I'm sorry. Then you drew a square around it. My brain is not understanding what that second square was all about. Okay, it's right here. It's this square right here. Yes. And I actually redesigned it on the fly. So it, actually, this is going to be four inches here instead of three inches. So this is the end of the rail. Okay. Okay. So this rail right here has that, if I turn those tenons back on, 
oh i moved them all right let's let's move them back something like that okay so uh it's the end of that rail right there it's butted up against the leg and that mortise is for the tenon which is right there okay going into it that's what that square is we're actually not going to cut that it's just there for reference okay okay so when we'd cut it we will machine it square then we'll cut the the mortise and then we'll do the of course we'll turn around we'll cut these details we'll do the lamb's tongue we'll even flute it but we'll we'll get into that a little bit more later oh okay i, I wasn't thinking about that being being uh, flat there that's still round is why you've got to if you've got to cut that flat um actually you could okay this i drew this up as a square on this end but if you wanted to you could make it round uh, uh, you know if i so what's going to happen here is I'm going to have legs. If you're looking down on it, my legs are going to be like this, inch and a half by inch and a half. And there would be four of them right here. And then the rails would be stretched across like this. OK. OK. So what you're looking at there, again, this is a little confusing. I apologize. But what you're looking at there, this right here is the end of this rail. Okay. It's just this end right here. So we know where, it, where it's going to land against the square leg. So it's just so we'll know where to position the mortise. That's the only reason I drew it there. Okay. We're not going to cut that. Okay. No, we, will, we won't cut it. Now, if it was round and you wanted to cut that so that the rail would go up flat, that'd be a, that's, that's the way to do it. You're absolutely correct. Okay. And then will Magnet give us any kind of discount like they used to on the projects that we did? Or, or you know what? Let me let me reach out to them and uh, I'll just overwrite that. Yeah, let me reach out to them and we'll get it. I need to save this as a V Car Pro. I'll, I'll see if they can offer a um, a group. You know, uh, I'm sure they will, but I just need to kind of find out how much. Yeah. Okay. okay. And again, you you'll be able to pull this up. Um, I'll talk with them. So when you call, just say this is for the display table, and I'll give them a heads up what it is, and they'll get you a price on it. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, no problem. All right, now here's the fun part, and it looks like I have CCAM Pro open twice. All right, CCAM Pro, the beta version. Okay. This is where it gets exciting because even though we're going to program some of the parts, like the rails and the tabletop, in Aspire or VCAR Pro, we can import all of that into this program and and organize the entire project into one. It's kind of like I did in Aspire here. I this isn't the normal way you do it. You would just have a, a, a blank size of the leg and you would design the leg. It's one part at a time for programming. But in uh, in uh, Conversation Cam Pro now, instead of a part based program it's a project based program so let's go ahead and build this project and get everything set up and in the next class we'll start the programming and we'll we'll focus on that joinery and the square ends and everything like that all right so i let me go back again i clicked on projects right up here to open up my project manager and you can see in this list there's nothing this is a this is a virgin copy brand new i just put it on so you you do it in this method if you start coming over here and start checking things and do things and then try to select it will not work okay you have to click new and give it a name so i'm going to call this the display table okay and it puts it right here under the project name and you, you notice it is required it has to be in there or else it won't save it okay it'll give you an error so in this particular part we are going to use the horizontal table for the tabletop we're going to use the vertical table for the tenants on the ends of the rails and we're going to use the turning center to turn the legs okay and if we want we can put a description in here this is the display table class um all right and if you want to i'll put my name in here and you can even put a comma a comment in here if you put the comment here it'll be at the top of every single g code so you're going to create several g code programs to cut all of these different parts 
but it would put this comment in here. So if you if you wanted everything here is to be made out of walnut, okay, all material is walnut, or whatever you want to put in here, okay, it will put that at the top of every single G code program you're going to run. So you'd see what material you're going to use. All right, so we put all the detail in here, and then we click on select and if you hit save, it would stay. Let's go back in here in the projects. If I would have hit save right here, it would have saved it, but then it would have this would have been left open and you could have created new and you can create four different projects or five different, you know, two projects, as many as you want. But in this case, we're simply going to create one and select. So it saves it and puts us right into here. Now, on the left, we have all of the workstations, horizontal, vertical and the turning center. So let's start creating our parts uh, on the horizontal table. Okay, we're going to click on this. Once we highlight that, we're going to click on manage parts. It changes to manage parts. Again, you have to click new for the part, give it a name. This is going to be the tabletop. Okay, you can put description and you can put a comment in here just for <laughs> the part. Okay, so this comment would only be in this particular part, not in everything for the project. Um, we're not using we're not creating a box we're using a standard blank so we're going to make this uh 8.7 no that's not what it was let's go back and look at our drawing it was oh 8.7 by 4 okay so we'll we'll do that no. 8. that's not your tabletop that's oh this is my tabletop you're right you're right thank you thank you thank you Okay, and then the thickness is three quarters. And it's very dangerous when I talk and work at the same time. It's not a good, good, not a good combination. Okay, just so you know, if you want, you can put a position down here for, and if you want to know what that means, you click on here, it'll explain it. But it, when it finishes in cutting the program, if you want this, the gantry just move out of the way so you can replace the part and then start the program over again. You can put here if you want to move it down, you know, uh, 20 inches in the X axis, for example, when it gets to, done cutting, it'll just move it down. If you want to move it over to Y, you can do that. OK, but this would just move it at the end of the program down 20 inches. So the part is exposed and you can take it out or do whatever. You don't have to jog the machine. So a lot of controls in here. What you're going to do. All right. So I'm not going to go into here and program. If I click on here now, I could actually manage tool pass. We'll get into that more later. Let's get into the vertical table now. And so it closed the horizontal table with the tabletop. Let's go to vertical. And this one, you're absolutely correct, is going to be the rail, the table rails. All right, and we'll make this 8.7 by four, by you three quarters. Also have to, you would have to also put that in the horizontal table so you have the two parts that you're gonna create on it. Okay, now this is brilliant. And I'm going to show you how this is done because this is very cool. I've created this part. You notice it has a width, a length, and, and a thickness. Now, if you're on the horizontal table, this is exactly right. The L is typically your, your X axis, right? And maybe I should put X, Y, and Z on here as well. However, when you are on a vertical table, you're going to stand this part up. And so the L actually becomes your Z, or how deep it is, how long it is. The width is your Y mounted in the vise, and your T is the thickness of the blank, but it becomes the X axis, because remember, you're machining on this face standing up. So what we can do here is I can, I've got my, my name, and I've got the size, and I can click on Save Blank. Instead of just Select It, I can say click on Save Blank. And we're going to call this the uh, table, and I'll give it a little bit more information, display table rails. Okay, so normally, like in Aspire, you create the blank on the fly as you use it in the part. And that's the only place you have. There's no database of blanks in Aspire. In Conversational Cam, the original, you created a database of blanks, and it, it could get over full over full. I mean, you could fill it up and never use it. So you'd have to go through and clear it once in a while. Okay, conversational cam pro combines those two worlds. So you create the blanks on the fly and just use it for that part, or you can save it to the database. 
All right. Now, when I go back into the horizontal table, let's select this. And it's just going to put it there. If I go into the horizontal table and manage my parts, I can come in here and say new and I'll say display table. And I capitalize that display table. They don't have to be exactly the same rails. And then I can say read a blank. And there's my display table rail right there. It saved it into this database. I'm going to select that. And look, it put it right in here. And then I can go ahead and select. So now you see in my horizontal table, I have the rails and the tabletop. And that rail is the exactly the same size part. It is the same part as the vertical table. So we can use the same blank in multiple workstations. Is that cool or what? Very, <laughs> yeah. Very cool. If you alter that uh, table rail size in one place, will it alter it in the other? That is a great question. And unfortunately, I don't know. I haven't tested that. But um, yeah, if you find something like this and you use our form, you know, go to, go to lwncnc.com slash ccam and put that in as a question, then we will definitely be able to pay attention and follow it up. So I highly encourage you, anytime you have a question like that, uh, just go into our website, LWM, oops, OWL, lwmcnc.com slash ccam. And just fill that out and you just put that here in a question. If, will it do it? Or if you test it, then you can put in here as a suggestion. Uh, we want this fixed, do it differently, okay? And, and you submit that, and that way uh, Mike will have access to that because he's doing a lot of this programming. So this is the best way to communicate all this information to Mike. Is is tra is your wife going to go, is Cindy going to go through and send out those? Uh, I got an email from you saying that she'll be getting in touch with me, but that was a few weeks ago. I haven't received anything. If you haven't received anything, she'll have to reach out to you first. Um, if you don't mind, would you just drop Cindy an email? It's Cindy, C-I-N-D-Y, at LegacyWoodworking.com. And just say, hey, I have not received my flash drive and I have not been contacted. She'll reach out to you and get your information so that, it, again, it'll cost you the 20 bucks to get it shipped out and she'll get it done. Um, I know she just asked me for uh, 10 more uh, flash drives with the installation on it. So it, she may simply be waiting on me. And if that's the case, I apologize. I made piles, but I need to make some more. So, yeah, just reach out to her and we'll make sure you get taken care of. All right, now we're going to go into the turning center. Click here and we'll click on manage parts. And you always have to click new. Don't just start adding information over here. It will not work. You have to click new and give it a name. And you can see part name is required. There's no name in here. So that's why you have to do this. And we're going to call this the display table legs or something like that. Okay, and we'll, now it could be a multi-sided part, it could be a round part, or it could be, it can be just a standard blank. If you were doing a corbel, for example, the original conversational cam, you couldn't use a standard blank. You would get an error and it'd crash. So we always had to use turning blanks. But in here, we can use a standard blank like a corbel, and you can index it and import programs and carve on it and cut this all out between centers in the turning workstation within Conversational Cam Pro. But we're gonna use a multi-sided, and you have several options. Let's say that was eight-sided, it'll display it right here, but uh, we're gonna make it four. And so we're done with that, and we just need to give it the length. And I'm gonna make this, <laughs> okay. This is where it depends if, depends on where you set your zero. So for example, if I set my x-axis zero right here on this, you know, one inch out from this end, then I'm gonna tell it that the blank is 28 inches because zero would be here and this end would be 28. If I set the x-axis zero to the end of the wood, I'm gonna tell it the blank is 29 and then I'm gonna program everything out, okay? Your choice. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I think I'm going to, well, to be safe, I'm going to program it this way, just because I'd hate for somebody to program this way and then run into the forge out check. So we're going to do it this way. So we're going to tell it that the blank is 28 inches long, but in reality, watch this. We're going to make it 28, and the thickness is going to be 1.625. It's four-sided. 
but in the description, it's going to be uh, 29 inches for um, the four jaw chuck, <laughs> okay? Right, and so and yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I found that you can go ahead and taper. You can have, say, a 29 inch blank and you can set your taper to run from, say, 10 inches to 28 inches. And then right. I'll leave that one inch block on there. And then all I got to do is cut it off. Yeah. Now, on, in this case, we always put the small end at the tailstock end as drawn here. So if we if we set if we only cut to 28, but there was actually 29, it would leave a one inch down here, which you could cut off. And that's not a problem either. So sometimes you want to do that. You want to leave material down here so you could make the blank extra long. But because we're going to actually set um, this is what we're going to do in this blank. We're actually going to put a oops. We're going to put a I'm going to undo that. We're going to put one inch of material right here. I, I understand that. I'm just, I, I ran my cutter into my revolving tailstock one day. Oh yeah. So you added material and, at this and end. So now yeah. I always add material as a safety factor. And, and that's really good practice. So you might end up something like this, in which case you're going to cut that off and you're going to cut this off. Right. Yeah, um, but we would make this then 30 inches long. So whichever way you decide to do it in here, I'm going to put in this, make this blank 29 inches long. Okay. And program for 28 inches. Okay. So in other words, what I'm saying here is that my X zero is going to be right here. The blank is going to be an extra inch long here, but we're going to start here. So we're programming for 28 and this will be zero, but the part will be 29. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. All right. So that's what's really cool about here is that you can add all these comments that'll go right into this part and it'll only show up in this part, nothing else. Okay. The make this out of Walnut would show up in this part as well as all the other parts, all the G codes. All right. And again, if you wanted, we're making four blanks. So when you're done with this blank, you might want to have the X axis move down, you know, 36 inches or something like that, just to get out of the way. So you can replace the blank and then start the program over again. Right. So a lot of tools in here that give you tremendous capabilities. Now we're going to go ahead and select this. And of course, there is our leg. Okay, so this is where we're going to call it a night in this class. Um, we have designed it and we've created the project and the project is called well it's, it's actually listed right here display table and it has a horizontal table a vertical table and a turning center and we've created the blanks for each one and we even duplicated the table rails so that when we went to horizontal i up here i gave it a display table rails we can change this one too if we want we can come down here manage the parts and choose table rails and we can call this Oh, I can't. I can't edit the name of the of the. Uh, okay, I would have to create a new one. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking we just come in to edit. Oh, rename. Look at that. So display table rails. Boom! You just have to hit the right button, rename, and that'll bring that field up so you can rename it and then select it. So now my rail here has the same name as here in the horizontal table. Now, what's really cool is that when we get into this horizontal, anything that we do in Aspire, we'll be able to bring in and plug right into this part. And in all of your programs, all of your parts, all the G code is going to be within this project so that you have access to everything at any given time. It's pretty dang cool. OK, well, we're going to call it good right there. Um, we don't even have to save. You notice there is no save here. This saves automatically. So if I close this and then open it back up again, everything in here is going to be the same. So I'll hit projects and there's the display table. I can just open it up and there's all my parts. It saves all the G code, all of everything that you do is saved automatically with this new version. OK, so in the next class, we're going to focus on the joinery and machining the square end and cutting the ends of the rails. 
and it'll create the tool pass and it'll generate the code. It'll create the report and then you can save out your G code and uh, start cutting parts. That's for next week. All right. Thanks for your Christmas present. <laughs> yeah, Merry Christmas, everybody. Same here, Ollie. It's set. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we were going to take a, a break for Christmas, but if you guys don't mind, I'm going to keep doing these classes on Wednesday for this project. I'm really excited about this and how it's all coming together. So if you guys are good for it, we're going to continue on Wednesday. So next Wednesday and the following Wednesday. And then um, if you miss them, if you're on vacation, we're going to record them so that you can put them back up. Keep going. Tracy. It was Merry good. Christmas. Merry Christmas, Tracy. everybody. All right. Thanks, everybody. Hey, Tracy, Thank you. you I'll be snow? here. Okay, I'm, the program's actually going to end right here, but I'm going to leave this open right now so that yeah, uh, there's still some questions coming in. So go ahead with your questions. Do you have snow? Uh, go ahead again. Say that again. Do you have any snow? Oh yeah, we got snow. Yeah, we got we got pelted, um, and we got a couple more storms coming in. So next week, not on Wednesday when we're teaching class, but next week sometime, I'm going snowshoe and I'm going to go. Uh, camping in the in the snow i'm gonna do a solo camp and uh spend some time alone in the wilderness i do this every year especially in the winter time it's my favorite so that's gonna be fun that's tracy. my christmas vacation yeah tracy yeah, we got 85. Or, uh, 85 degrees <laughs> tracy yes for continuity purposes will we be publishing this uh prior to next week's session yes we will um, I've got it recorded and Chris is aware of it now. And so it usually takes him a day to get it on. So I'm going to see if he can't get it uh, posted tomorrow for us. One last question. You, you uh, created uh, fillets in the uh, mortise. Do you have to do a corresponding fillet on the tenon? That's right. Both the mortise and the tenon will look just like that. Okay. The only difference is the mortise will be deeper and we will give an allowance a little clearance on the on the mortise uh, to give us a little, you know, so it, it fits. We you know, have a little space, we won't, so it doesn't. Uh, and a lot of times, to be honest with you, depending upon your router bit, this is a this is a great question because what I found is that I will cut my tenons first on my part, and then I'll put a scrap piece in or even the real piece in, and I'll cut this mortise last. And if it doesn't fit, I'll just recut the mortise again a little bit larger until it fits and then that's my new code and i'll make all my legs that way um, so i always like to do a test fit uh, rather than just machine everything up and then go to put it together and find out it doesn't quite work but depending upon the router bit if the bit is you know two thousandths too small or if you're climbing in or uncutting you can get different sizes it's only a few thousands of an inch but it can make a big difference so it will both of them will be shaped just like this however the mortise will be slightly larger thank you what are your hours now? You know, I just realized I'm not sharing my screen, am I? Yeah, I wasn't sharing my screen. Let me go back into there. <laughs> See, I flaked on you. This is what I was talking about. This mortise right here is the same as the tenon. All right. Okay, next question. Yeah, are there temperature limits on what we can machine at with a, with a Maverick? Temperature limits? You mean the ambient yeah. ambient air? The temperature yeah, let's say it gets cold in my garage. You know, there there is a limit for the uh, spindle that it needs to it needs to be a certain uh, above certain temperature. If you warm the spindle up, it will start off very slow because the oil will be thick, has to heat up and be lubricated. If you warm up the spindle uh, before you run it, then you should be okay. But I believe there is a recommended temperature range. Um, would you mind? Chris told me that it was 50 degrees. 50? Yeah, you want it 50 degrees or above to run it? OK. And we might want to check with, we use a Hitico for the auto tool change on a 4x8. We use a different one for the liquid cooled on the 3x5. Um, so you might want if you're if you're running a four by eight with the high tico auto tool change you might want to reach out to them and find out it's uh you could look them up online i'll find i'll i'll do a little research and find out uh what what, what the temperature range is 
If the water in the bucket's froze, it's too cold. <laughs> yeah, if it's liquids are cooled, <laughs> hopefully that uh, antifreeze in there should keep it from doing that. But if that freezes, you're in big trouble. <laughs> yeah, because my I'm my my uh, it's in an, uh, my machine's in an unheated garage. Okay. But woodworking season gets shortened when it gets cold out, and I'd like to know, you know if I can run it right now or not. Is it the liquid cooled or is it the um, auto tool change? Liquid cooled. I'll see if I can find out for you. I don't know off the top of my hand. You know, they're going to give you, to be honest with you, they're going to give you a, a window and they're going to be conservative, you know, to be safe. I, I, th understand that. I think if you did a spindle warm up, even if it's colder than that, I think you're going to be okay. But I'd double check before you do it. I don't want you to damage the spindle. The rest of the machine's no problem. It's just the question of the spindle. Hey, Jason, this is Ali. I have a general question, maybe off subject, but um, as a general rule, if I'm trying to engrave a glass or a bell or something like that on the turn of station, should I turn off the smart tool? Okay, here's what you've got. That, that's a great question. You know, when you, when you program for turning between centers and the smart tool on, the Z0 is always exactly in the center of the turning, right? So if you use Smart Tool, if you know that that cylinder, if it's a glass, whatever, is exactly three inches, then you can program it for a three inch diameter and it'll touch off Smart Tool and, and do it that way. However, if there's a question, if it's not exactly three inches and it varies, what you might want to do is, this could be kind of challenging, but you could you could program so Z zero is on the surface of the material in a spire. It won't have it won't do this in in uh, CCAM Pro. You'd have to do this in a spire. But if you're doing engraving text, you're going to be doing it in a spire anyway with a wrapped. You could set it for the top, turn Smart Tool off, and then you're going to touch off that bit onto the glass manually and set your Z. Does that make sense? Yes, very much. Okay. The last time I tried, it went through the glass. Oh, <laughs> but I had Smart Tool on. Yeah, and that's why, because it'll set Smart Tool on will set Z to the middle of the blank, and so if you programmed it for the top and had Smart Tool on, <laughs> it would have tried to cut all the way to the bottom. Do, do they call that the price of learning? <laughs> yeah, I guess we need to have more classes on that faster and <laughs> try to help you out. Yeah, that's the price of learning for sure. Just don't do it with an heirloom. To be honest with you, Ollie, a lot of times when I'm doing something different, kind of out of the box, I will run the part in air. In other words, I won't put the glass in. I just start the program and watch it cut in air. And if it doesn't look right, then I know I got to go back fix the program. I thought I was doing that, but the thing went right through the glass. <laughs> yeah, but that was exciting. Hey, Tracy, this is Norm. There's a website, NC Viewer, I think is the name of it. And okay. you can visualize what you're doing with the uh, G code. You drop it right into it. It's kind of neat. NC Viewer? Yeah, I think it's NC Viewer. I'll have to look it up and maybe I'll email it to you, the uh, address. But try NC Viewer. Let me see if I got it here on. I got a different computer in the shop than I have inside. Will this show toolpath or actually a model? It shows the toolpath. It'll walk right through it. There, you got it right there. Oh yeah. So you just it's, you're just gonna put your G code and then it's mm -hmm. gonna it's gonna put it. Yeah, you just here. there's a file, that little file up above the icon on the left side towards the oh, top. Yeah. You you just, right. yeah, you just upload your file right there and then you can watch it. I've used that a bunch of times to make sure something isn't gonna get too screwed up. Oh great. Well, I appreciate that. I'll have to experiment with that. That's that's fantastic. And Thanks. then the other thing. Oh, you bet. The other thing I was going to ask you, I had, um, I just sent you on your form. Um, I know you had talked about a list of, of suggestions that people make on on the uh, CCAM Pro that you're going to list it. But um, also, we had I had sent you before. Uh, can you add an update button or an upload button so we could submit screenshots of what we encounter and then. Uh, Right. And then also a list of what, you know, like when you say fix number one, fix number two, the bug fixes and improvements that you make, are you going to be doing that? On yeah. I'll, Pro? Yeah. I'll print out a uh, list. I'll work with Mike and we'll put together kind of a spreadsheet or a database of, uh, 
uh, you know, just a list of the corrections for each one. Now, as I, as soon as I get this add-ons, you know, the updates DVR. perfected, then I will, uh, you know, so I'll go from 1.0 to 1.1 to 1.2 to 1.3 and so on. So this first beta version will be one point something. And I will document 1.5, for example, what changes were made in 1.4 and 1.3. You know, all the changes are made will be documented in that list so that you can know what you're getting. Yeah, it's helpful. So I don't send a bunch of stuff to you. You don't need. <laughs> yeah, if we've already got it, Craig. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> all right. Any other questions? Hey, Chris, you ever, uh, um, this is Mike. Do you ever... Um, use any other cutter other than a uh, v cutter to do lamb stones yeah you can use uh i've used barley twist router bits i've used you know typically if you're doing on a lathe let me the v bit is just the um the simple fast way to do it but if you were i'm going to share my am i sharing my screen can you see me <laughs> yes yeah. okay Okay, so I turned the router bits on, and I have used various cutters. Like for example, where is my uh, where is my oh right here barley twist. I've used barley twist because you know it it end right here and then it rolls up like this, and then you could also use even a core box where it would. Uh, um, I wouldn't use the deep cut, but just the, the standard core box bits like these. Um, again, the the edge that you're going to translate from goes from here and it flares out. Um, so you could use virtually any cutter that you wanted to create that. Um, a V bit is just constantly the same angle all the way. So it's the simplest one to do. But you, you could use various. I'm just looking to see if I had another one here that... Uh, uh, oh, here we go. You could even use something like a classic punch. Now, it would add this little detail to it, too, because it's going to split right here. It would have a step in the lamp stung, which is unorthodox. That's not normal. But, you know, you get to choose any design you want. But those are the V, v grooves, probably the most common. And, uh, of course, we could always have a uh, an exact bit profile designed up specifically for lamb's tongues as well and put it in the list. So if there's interest in that, I'll talk with Magnate. We can have one produced. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I've, I've done barley twist before and it uh, actually worked very, very nicely. So. Right, okay. okay. Thanks. Hey, Tracy. Yeah. Are, are you gonna be able to post the uh, files for the speed and feeds you know the, the spreadsheet and all the other ones i can't find them out there here it is right here it got it got posted today under training class review and is that the video or is that the actual files oh i have not posted the files chris just posted the video Okay, yeah, I got to get the files. I, um, I got them from Milo. Okay, I'll have to put them on here. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Speaking of Milo, uh, I got a tremendous amount of uh, uh, information out of that class from him. Uh, so I was playing around with the machine, and I decided I was going to try and do some of the uh, feeds and speeds. And to get the proper chip load, I think I was running a 7503 on a small part, uh, just a test part. I had to take the feed uh, to get, I, I found a chart online, got the, the uh, uh, chip load size or the chip size. Anyway, I, the feed went to 800 inches per minute. And so I thought, well, we'll give it a shot. It scared the crap out of me. <laughs> it did an incredible job. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah. yeah it is pretty nice all right which machine do you have four by eight 2020 okay yeah that that uh high tico spindle and with the delta controller really does a nice job at those uh extremely high speeds you know some of the stuff that milo and, and doug have done would scare me to death like you said they're pretty intense <laughs> 
Hey, Tracy. Tracy any, any idea when uh, we get a update to the correct uh, run from a line number? Um, I have, yeah, I've got a couple things that's got to be corrected. I'm working with Delta right now, the engineer with Delta, um, on uh, quite a list of, of updates that we want, and that is one of them. Unfortunately, I can't give you an exact date when we expect it. It's just, you know, working through everything and getting everything done. So it, it is on the list, Ollie, but it's not ready yet. Hey, Tracy, you were talking about cutting glass earlier. What kind of bit would you use for cutting glass? Well, there's a, a couple of, uh, there's a couple of cutters available. There is a diamond drag uh, bit. It's a spring loaded tip and it has a little uh, piece of diamond in the tip. And I've used that to etch glass, but just be aware you can't do, you can't do a tremendous amount because you'll wear that diamond tip off and you'll have to replace it. Um, but it's spring loaded. So you just set it down. So it, it'll, you know, you have to, you plunge down about, I don't know, 10 thousandths, something like that. Just enough to put enough pressure on there to, for it to engrave in the glass. I have done it with a V bit before. Again, you got to be really shallow. It's got to be only, uh, you know, not very deep for doing that, but I've, I've done it with that. I don't know if anybody else any has, has any other suggestions for that. Okay. Yeah. The most common one that I've used is that, um, diamond, uh, diamond drag tip diamond drag i don't know what they call it i can't remember i'll have to look it back up spring-loaded diamond chip yeah go ahead do you have any experience with that donic drag knife i was i got a, my trailer i bought a new trailer for my business and i was going to put a, a wrap on it uh -huh. and i know i can buy those wraps but i didn't know how to get it to sit flat on the table and uh, i mean i could design everything and use a donic drag drag knife it looks like but i just wonder if you had any experience with it and how do you hold a you know you material have do you have a vacuum table? Do you have a vacuum? Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I would think. No, I I need to check with this, but I would think you could hold it down with the vacuum. Yeah. Does anybody else have any experience with that? Okay. Yeah, the, I've had some people ask for a class on that, and I keep promising, but it it always gets pushed off a little bit. I, it's something that we need to do, do some tests. But I would I would try it with the. Uh, I know I know there's a. Uh, Aspire has a gadget for doing drag knife work, uh, so it doesn't spin the, doesn't turn the spindle on. And um, I would imagine the vacuum would be the way to hold it. To try and experiment with it and see what sticks to the table, what doesn't, if it's too porous or not. But uh, yeah. okay, I was just curious if you had any experience with that knife at all. And, no, I haven't. I've got the knife. I've got two of them. <laughs> Well, bring it out when you when you come out. We'll try it. <laughs> All right. All right. Sounds good. All right. Tracy, is there an M code that will bring the uh, the head over to the tool change position without going through the touch off procedure? Do you have um, Do you have uh, Delta or uh, um, Mach three? Mach three. Mach three. Unfortunately, there's not. Um, so all you can do is use a um, manual data input line. That would work. Um, but then you got to type it in every time. <laughs> in the, the Delta system, we actually have a, a button that just goes to the manual tool change position. Um, we have a button that will just change the tool and not touch off, and we have one that will touch off. Thank so. you. Sorry, yeah, MDI is probably the only way to do it. Anybody else? All right. Well, again, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and thank you for your input, and thank you for your kindness and for your, your help with these classes. Um, this is one of my favorite parts of the whole business and uh, that's because of you so again thank you very much and we'll catch you all next week same to you tracy and your merry christmas family. tracy all right and merry christmas merry christmas